Thanatos was a Greek god responsible for bringing a serene death. His name in ancient Greek, death is his profession and it is his trade that he becomes reviled for. Though more welcome than the presence of more malignant beings, Thanatos still became the name that was said with bated breath. Who is Thanatos? In Greek mythology, Thanatos is the shadowy god of death. He is the son of Nyx, Night, and Erebus, Darkness, and the twin brother of Hypnus. Like many children of Nyx, Thanatos could be labeled as a personified spirit or a daimon rather than a full-fledged god. The epic poet Homer uses the term daimon interchangeably with Theos, God. Both are used to refer to divine beings. According to Katsi, 2014, Homer's use of daimon could denote a specific but unnamed superhuman agent, a named god or goddess, a collective divine force, a thonic power or an unaccountable strain in mortal behavior. As such, these personified spirits tended to be embodiments of more abstract concepts than tangible elements. Examples of these concepts include love, death, memory, fear, and yearning. Thanatos presented himself, regardless of his reputation as ancient Greece's all-encompassing death god, during a peaceful, or otherwise non-violent death. He did not traditionally manifest at the scene of violent deaths, as those were the realm of his sisters, the Kyries. What does Thanatos look like? As a mere personification of death, Thanatos was not portrayed often. When he was, he would be a handsome winged youth, wearing black and sporting a sheathed sword. Further, it was rare to have him depicted without his twin brother, Hypnus, who was identical to him save for a few minor details. In a few artworks, Thanatos appeared as a dark-haired man with an impressive beard. In accordance with Greek mythology, Thanatos' sword held great significance. The sword was used to cut hair from a dying person, thus signifying their death. This phenomenon is referenced in Alcestis, when Thanatos states that all whose hair is cut in consecration by this blade's edge are devoted to the gods below. Naturally, the gods below means the underworld and all the thonic deities that shy away from the shining sun. What is Thanatos the god of? Thanatos is the Greek god of peaceful death and a psychopomp. More specifically, Thanatos can be explained away as the ancient Greek personification of death. His was a death most ideal. Legends state that Thanatos would manifest before mortals in their final hour and, with a gentle touch akin to that of Hypnus, and their life. It is important to understand that Thanatos acted on command by the fates, restricted by the destiny of one's life. He was unable to act on his own accord, nor was he able to violate destiny and decide when an individual's time was up. To do his duty, Thanatos had to have impeccable timing and nerves of steel. He was not a faint-hearted god. Moreover, Thanatos was strict. In the opening discussion of Euripides tragedy, Alcestis, Apollo accuses Thanatos of being hateful to men and a horror to the gods after he refused to delay someone's hour of death. Thanatos responds? You cannot always have more than your due. Why is Thanatos the god of death? There is no real rhyme or reason as to why Thanatos became the god of death. He was simply born into the role. If we follow the trend of newer generations of gods replacing older ones, it could be argued that Thanatos, and his realm, are no different. It is hard to pinpoint when Thanatos was born, but his birth was likely prior to the Titanomachy. After all, Cronus ruled during the Golden Age of Man, where men knew no hardship and always died peacefully in their sleep. While this is a prime example of Hypnus Thanatos' teamwork, the root of death may have been more multifaceted at the time. In Greek mythology, Iapetus was the titan god of mortality. Coincidentally, 
He was also the stubborn father of the mighty Atlas, the cunning Prometheus, the forgetful Epimetheus, and the foolhardy Manetius. Since mortality is a huge realm afflicted by various human conditions and external forces, it is likely Iapetus' role was divided amongst a handful of other beings. Other divinities that could have inherited aspects of Iapetus' realm include Juras, Old Age, and the spirits of brutal death, the Kyries. Thanatos in Greek mythology. The role of Thanatos in Greek mythology is a minor one. He is mentioned often, ominously referred to here and there, but an appearance is uncommon. In all, we know of three myths that Thanatos has a central part in. While these myths vary in message, one unifies them, you cannot escape fate. Sarpedon's burial the first of the three myths takes place during the Trojan War and Homer's Iliad. Sarpedon, a valiant Trojan War hero, had just fallen after a melee with Patroclus. Now, Sarpedon's parentage plays a role in his tale. He was a son of Zeus born from the Lycian princess Laodemia. Variations in Greek mythology have also listed him as the son of the Phoenician princess Europa by Zeus, therefore making him the brother of King Minos and Radamanthus. When the Lycian prince fell, Zeus was hit hard. He was planning on intervening to save Sarpedon until Hera reminded him that other children of gods were falling and saving his son would cause an uproar. Zeus, unable to bear seeing Sarpedon amongst the battlefield gore, directed Apollo to summon twin brothers Sleep and Death. The twins were meant to carry Sarpedon back to his homeland, the broad green land of Lycia, where he could receive a proper burial. For some background, performing proper burial rites was crucial for the deceased. Without them, they could return as ghastly, wandering ghosts in the afterlife. In the case of Sarpedon, Zeus feared that he would linger as a biathanatos, a specific type of ghost that suffered a violent death and would become active if refused a proper burial. Slippery Sisyphus. Once upon a time, there was a man. A king, actually, King Sisyphus. Now, Sisyphus ruled Corinth. The dude was generally hateable, violating Xenia by killing guests and sitting on a throne made up of blood and lies. Zeus, as the patron of strangers, couldn't stand him. When Zeus finally had enough of Sisyphus' disrespect, he instructed Thanatos to chain Sisyphus up in Tartarus. Of course, Thanatos obliged and brought Sisyphus there. Only, Sisyphus was as slippery as a snake and Thanatos was all too unsuspecting. In a turn of events, Sisyphus chained Thanatos in Tartarus and just walked out. Anyways, the only one who seemed to notice was Ares, since no one was dying in battles. More peeved at bloody conflicts getting boring than at the natural order of things getting disrupted, Ares released Thanatos. He also ended up handing Sisyphus over by the scruff of his neck. After this, Sisyphus went on to muster the audacity to lie to the dread Persephone and gaslight his wife from beyond the grave. He continued to be a nuisance until Hermes dragged him back to the underworld permanently.